Hi everybody, welcome to part five of Restoring the Ancient Past. If you've been with us for the first four uh, sessions, uh, you've learned some exciting stuff. And um, if you haven't, I'd really encourage you to go back and kind of study the beginning because I go into a lot of detail and really give a, a strong biblical foundation for um, where, where we're coming from. But basically, the idea is that Lucifer can create nothing. That the things that we're seeing, the, the spiritual things that we're seeing the occult and the New Age walk in, um, are all counterfeits of things that God has created. Now, some of the horrific things that they do are a, such a counterfeit, you know, sacrificing and things like that. It's, it's, a, it's a counterfeit of the sacrifice of Christ on the cross. Uh, some of the things that, that the occult does and some, you know, really atrocious rituals are counterfeits of communion and things like that. So sometimes the counterfeits are barely recognizable because the enemy so perverts and defiles things that he can create nothing. And so we've been through um, the fact that that we must go through Jesus, that the, the work that Christ did on the cross um, not only reconciled us to the Father, but it also did away with the, the separation between spiritual realms and dimensions. Everything that Adam lost, Jesus has given us back. And we're not even scratching the surface of understanding the things that Adam walked in. And so uh, this is exciting stuff. And, um, you know, I just really want to reiterate that it must go through Jesus Christ. It must come out of a born-again experience with him, out of intimacy with him, and going through him who is the gate the door. You can access the supernatural realm a different way, but the Bible says in John 10, if you do that, you're a thief and a robber. You're stealing what God has created for us as children, and we don't want to do that. But we do want to enjoy everything that Christ purchased for us with his blood. And, you know, some of this stuff might be new for some of you. It might be a little different than any teachings that you've heard before, and I would just encourage you to just not, not gauge by what's familiar don't trade with a spirit of fear because it's a demonic spirit. It will never produce godly fruit. Uh, the Holy Spirit's job, he is the spirit of truth. It's his job to keep us from deception. So we always, anything that we hear, whether it's familiar or unfamiliar, we go to him and we ask him to teach us and guide us. And he will. He's so, so faithful. So I just want to encourage you to just take the things that we're talking about and uh, study the scripture. I'm giving you a lot of scriptures. Study the word. Inquire of God. It, you know, listen to the Holy Spirit, and, um, you know, he, he, will, he will guide you in this, and he will lead you to the things that are important for you in the next season of your maturation. Some of this stuff may interest you, and others may not, and, and um, he, he guides us with the desires of our heart. That's part of how we grow and mature, so um, if there are things that you're not sure about, then just put it, put it on hold until you hear from the Lord, but but the, the purpose of this one is just to, to show us you know, each of these topics could be a whole teaching in and of themselves. I'm just giving you a broad, broad uh, overview just to show you some things that are possible and to kind of create a holy desire in you to run after the things that Jesus has died to give us. So in the, in the last four parts, we talked about out-of-body experiences. That's when we go uh, into the spirit realm in spirit and in soul, but our bodies aren't going yet. We talked about trans relocation, and that's when uh, teleportation, that's when we go to a different geographical place in the earth from place to place in body. Translation, that's when we go in body to heaven. Uh, disappearing, we talked about levitation. Ezekiel did that. God lifted him up by the head of the hair, and he was suspended between heaven and earth. That's a crazy experience. I've also heard some other stories of people that would, you know, uh, were so enraptured in the presence of God that that happened. Um, we talked about interacting with a cloud of witnesses and how that's not the same as necromancy. We talked about interacting with angels and heavenly beings, how they're our counterpart and they're, they're, they co-labor with us and minister to us as, as together we bring glory to God. We talked about transfiguration, uh, auras or also known as Peter's shadow. Uh, we talked about telepathy, which is discernment on steroids and how we're created in the image of God with, with the ability to do that innately in us. Uh, we talked about time travel, time dilation. Um, we've been actually, in, in recent months, we've 
really, you know, because we're, uh, we've got a small little ecclesia here in Jacksonville, Florida called All Things Restored, and we're just going for it. You know, we're saying we want everything that Jesus died to give us. And so um, we've, we've had several people, our friend Pat here has experienced several situations where she's ex experienced tangible time dilation, like um, driving on the way to a gathering that normally takes an hour and getting there in 20 minutes. So this stuff is real. And I think, it, I think as we steward the little miracles of multiplication and time dilation and things like that, money appearing in our bank accounts, and as we notice the pennies, as we notice the minutes, and we receive them and we offer thanks to them, it will continue to grow because that's how it works in the realm of the spirit. When we steward little, we're given more. So I just want to encourage you guys to realize this is not for a special few. This isn't for the really holy people. This is for anybody that's born again, that's willing to submit to the, the process of growth and maturity. This is what the Father has for us. It is his good pleasure to give us the kingdom. So I just want to encourage you guys to say yes to this stuff and start paying attention because the Father will start small. And as we notice it and we thank him for it, He'll give us more and more because then we'll be able to steward more and more. Uh, last time in part four, we talked about the third eye and how that's the pineal. How Jacob, when he wrestled with God, called that place pineal because he encountered God face to face. And how the enemy wants to, uh, that was the fountain that was opened up in, in, in uh, Genesis when Adam and Eve ate from the wrong tree. And how Satan wants to usurp that and, and have possession of that but how it belongs to God, and that place, that that fountain, that gateway in our being, the New Age will call it a chakra, is very, very important, and how it enables us to see in the Spirit, and how it is meant to be guarded by the laws of God and the presence of God, and that that's what the phylacteries uh, represent. So we talked about some really, really exciting stuff. That was the really, really quick version. Um, this time, we're going to start talking about something that's closely related to time, uh, and that is the stars. Astrology and the zodiac are probably the terms that, that we're the most feel, familiar with. But the term Maseroth is actually found in the Bible, and um, I'm going to read that, read that passage for you. But basically, it means the constellations. So it's found in Job 38, 31 through 33, and it says, God speaking to Job, and he says this, <clears throat> Can you bind the cluster of the Pleiades or loose the belt of Orion? Can you bring out Maseroth in its season or can you guide the great bear with its cubs? Do you know the ordinances of the heavens? That is a very key phrase. Can you set their dominion over the earth? That's a real key. Because remember in Genesis, when the Father created the sun, moon, and stars, what did he do? He created them for times and seasons. Now, I'm going to read that passage uh, here in, in a few minutes, but uh, a word, a Hebrew word that's very closely related to the word Maseroth is the word Mazalot, and they have the same root, and they're just slightly different. And this, um, this passage, the, the Mazalot word, <clears throat> is found in 2 Kings 23.5, and uh, I want to read that passage to you as well because it's a good display of the real versus the counterfeit. Um, it says, he put away the idolatrous priest whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in Judah's cities and round about Jerusalem. Also those who burned incense to Baal, to the sun, to the moon, to the constellations, or 12 signs of the zodiac, and to all the host of the heaven. So that word there that, that says constellations is that slightly different word than what we see in the book of Job. And this is the word Mazalot. So clearly we see the real and the counterfeit and that they are very related. The word Maseroth literally means, this is so cool, the literal meaning of the word Maseroth means a garland of crowns. Does that sound familiar? Does that sound like anywhere that you would find a garland of crowns in the scripture? I didn't realize this until very, very recently. This is a new revelation that I'm kind of just giving you a, 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 a broad overview, but I, I, this is something I intend to mine out in, in great depth later. But uh, what about Revelation 20, 12, 1? Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of 12 stars. Then being uh, being with child, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And you know the story. 
So we know that's a messianic prophecy, but the Word of God is multidimensional. I believe that 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 the Word of God has so many layers. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I'm in a season right now. I kind of came through a season where the Lord was, I was unlearning some stuff that was either incorrect in my walk with the Lord, that may, may be religious, or just incomplete. Maybe it was a box that was true, but was a little too small. So I kind of went through an unlearning process, and now I'm in a process of just kind of, um, where a new hunger is rising in me to devour the word. And it's like I'm reading a whole different book because it's it's so much bigger. It's still, it still means most of the same thing that it's always meant, but it goes deeper and it goes higher. It is multidimensional. It is a supernatural book. It is a gateway. It is a portal. So I believe what the multi, multidimensional nature of this passage, I believe that another dimension of this verse's meaning is that the church, the bride of Christ, is giving birth to the sons of God who will rule and reign. And that's, she's wearing a crown of stars. And I believe that's symbolic of dominion um, over creation and time. And so we'll, we'll, we'll get more. So one of the key differences between the real and the counterfeit has to do with our God-given dominion over created creation. And this, this revelation about this, it particularly in, in regard to astrology, um, came out of a series of encounters that I had in, starting in 2013. So it's kind of a long story, but uh, it started with a, a prophetic friend of mine named Mary, who's uh, in Reading now, dear, dear friend, very prophetic intercessor. And um, she had a dream. And in this dream, she saw me worshiping and interceding on the keyboard. And though she, she didn't really understand this part of it, but she knew that it had something to do with the alignment of the stars and some promises of God manifesting on the earth. So she just, you know, she, she, called me, emailed me the dream, and she goes, this is what I saw, this is what I know by the Spirit, it has to do with, but I don't have a grid for this, I don't really understand this. But, uh, you know, her revelation is very credible, so of course I took it to the Lord, and it, it left me with more questions than answers, honestly. So one of the questions that I had for the Father was this, do I align with the stars to see these promises that you've given me come to pass, or do I bring alignment to them? And, uh, you know, I, I never heard anybody talk about this. So uh, I didn't know anybody to go to except just to go to the Father. And um, he always is faithful to answer. Maybe not right then, but he always answers. So a few weeks later, I start having a series of encounters that begin to answer this question and started me on this crazy quest. So what happened was I was just in a time of worship and prayer, just, you know, adoring the Lord and spending time with him. And all of a sudden, <clears throat> Jesus came to me, and he spoke to me out of Song of Solomon. I love Song of Solomon. And there's several places in Song of Solomon, chapter 2, where he repeats the same chorus, if you will. And it said, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. So he was saying that to me. It melted my heart to start with. And he grabbed me by the hand and said, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. And he took me, not in body but in spirit, into the stars. And that was my first time that I'd been there. It was literally in the the, the heavens not the heavenly realm, but the, the heavens where the stars are. And so um, he, he, first of all, the first time that I went there with him, he was kind of like, watch this. And he moved some of them. He rearranged some stars. And I was kind of like just intrigued by that, like, okay, he's moving them. And the first time that I was there, um, he allowed me to encounter uh, a witch, a warlock, and a unicorn. I know this is weird, but it was like I was able to see them, but they couldn't see me. I was invisible to them, very well protected by the Lord. And that was the only time that they were there. Um, but I did notice, and we're going to get into this more later, but this is where my revelation about the pyramid started. The Holy Spirit specifically highlighted the fact that, you know, your typical, if you, you know, your cartoon witch has the pointed hat and the wizard with the pointed hat and the unicorn, of course, with the, the pointed horn. I'm not saying unicorns are demonic. I, I, don't, I don't have any revelation on that. I just know what I saw there. And uh, the Holy Spirit began to speak to me and to show me that it was like the pyramid and that the pyramid is all about the counterfeit mountain of the Lord. Again, Lucifer creates nothing. He can only steal what God is, has um, created and use it for his own purposes. The mountain of the Lord has to do with encounter. It has to do with when Moses went up in the mountain of, mountain of God, right? He saw God face to face. The elders of Israel went with him up to a certain point. They, they ate and drank with God. But what happened when Moses went up the mountain? He got the blueprint. 
he came back down, he implemented the blueprint. So the blueprints, the mountain of God, is the place where there's face-to-face -face encounter, and it is the face-to-face, -face, it is the place where blueprints are given to be implemented on the earth. That might give you, and we're going to, again, we're going to talk about this a little bit more as we proceed, but that gives us a little bit of understanding why we see the Illuminati symbols, that, that, um, mount, that pyramid with the, the all-seeing eye, you know, the occult nature of the pyramids, you know, it, the occult, the, uh, Egypt was steeped in the occult as we see of the encounter with Moses and the magicians of Pharaoh, which we are going to talk about later. So, um, that, that just that, that was uh, the beginning of kind of that part of the, that encounter. So that's a little bit of a side note. So I had a series of encounters where the first time the Lord just said, come on, watch me do this. And then the second time he grabbed me and he, he said, come on, you know, my same thing, arise my beloved, come with me. And then he said, okay, let's do this together. And then he took me back again and he was like, okay, you know what to do. So I understood from those encounters that I had authority and dominion to arrange the stars. So that he used the, that series of encounters to answer my question from my friend's dream, and it showed me I don't align with the stars. I, in my place of dominion, I bring them into alignment. And um, the father started. He started using the the story of the Roman centurion a lot with me about that time. Um, you know, Jesus really praised this guy. He said, you have greater faith than I have seen anywhere in Israel. I mean, that was a huge compliment. And the Roman centurion experienced a tremendous miracle. He saw his servant healed when, uh, when Jesus wasn't physically there. And so what did the Roman centurion say? He said, I get this. I know how you operate. I see who you are. He said, because I'm a man under authority and I'm a man in authority. So that's a huge key for us. In um, this issue of time, um, times and seasons, it's a huge issue when it comes to the sun, moon, and stars, the Maseroth, the as astrology, what the occult does and what we're able to do. Because he is our, the Lord showed me, the Roman centurion is a prototype of the Gentile church that is learning how to rule and reign. But it's always, always, always out of a place of absolute and total s s surrender and, and coming up under God's authority, then we can exercise our authority. If we are not under, fully under his authority, then we're going to be one of those lawless ones that the Lord talks about when he says, hey, we did all this cool stuff, and he says, depart from me. I never knew you workers of lawlessness. So we have to be in right relationship with God. But under that place where we're fully submitted to his lordship, we can exercise our dominion over creation, which, uh, which includes the sun, moon, and stars, which the Bible says are given to, to govern times and seasons. And I, I've got that verse somewhere. I think I've gotten a little ahead of myself. But these encounters were all about moving, rearranging, and aligning the stars. So the Lord began to show me out of this encounter with the, 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 the witches and the, the warlock and all that, he showed me that the New Age and the occult they align themselves with creation, they worship creation, or they use the stars for selfish gain, and I'm going to explain that a little bit more later. But the children of God have been given God-given dominion over creation. It's what he gave Adam in the beginning. He gave us dominion over creation. Adam lost it. Jesus gave it back to us. So remember what we're learning, that wherever there's a counterfeit, there's a real, and the real is always better. So I want to read some scripture here. I hope you're your brain isn't tilting yet, but I want to read some, some uh, scripture to ground this out. So first one I want to read is Psalm 8, 6 through 8, and it says this. You have made him, talking about man, David said, you have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the seas. So he's given all things under our hands. He's given us dominion over creation. So this is a key passage here, a Genesis 1.14. This is really the key of, of where we're going here. The stars govern the times and the seasons. God, in Genesis 1.14 says, Then God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. Let them be for signs and seasons for days and years. 
All right, so when Jesus' flesh was torn, the veil in the temple was torn from top to bottom. In him we have access to God the Father and access to, to dimensions outside of time. All that Adam lost, Christ gave us back. Um, so in complete submission, we fulfill the original mandate. And out of this revelation, the Lord began showing me that this is why creation is groaning and longing to be brought back into right dominion. And we're going to talk more about that in a minute. So I want to, before I, before I read that passage in Romans and talk about creation's longing, I want to share another encounter that I had that kind of explains this. And I'm going to read this from my journal because I can't say it any better than how I originally wrote it. So I hope it doesn't sound stiff, but it's, um, I don't, I didn't feel like I could tell as well as I could read it. So in this encounter, um, the father gave me an assignment. So I stood in obedience and I stood firmly in the place where he, he told me to go. And I decreed divine order and justice into the stars. So he sent, this is after Jesus kind of showed me how it worked, did it with me and said, okay, kid, you know what to do. So then I got this assignment from the father and I stood in a particular place in the stars and telling, saying what he told me to say, I, I decreed divine order and justice. I spoke it out in that place. And what happened was the stars started rejoicing and singing as they, because they started coming into alignment with the will of the Father. Because I was in submission to the Father's will and I used my authority to bring them into divine order, they were brought into divine order. And they were praising him for his wisdom, his kindness, his majesty. And I could literally feel the yearning to please him. They were they're created by him and they so want to make him happy. They so want to fulfill his purposes and his plans. They so want to just to fulfill what he wants them to do and to to fu to fulfill everything that he's that he that he has ordained for them and i literally saw them smiling and dancing i know that doesn't make sense but i could see them i could see them in the eyes of my of my heart and they were they were rejoicing in a way that i can't even explain and then they began to explain to me this our job is to govern the times and the seasons and to display his glory our delight is to be in perfect alignment with his will and to release his perfect timing. Mankind was given dominion over creation, including us. Therefore, we became subject to futility at the fall. As you rise and take your place, bringing us back into alignment, we will be the vehicle of his will manifesting upon the earth. We are responsible to steward due time, perfect time, the fullness of time, and the time of life. Okay, and that started a whole word study for me. In the fullness of time, Christ came. When, when God gave Isaac, allowed um, Sarah to conceive, you know, and they produced seed when they were as good as dead, the Bible says. The Bible says it was in the fullness of time. The stars govern all of that. Due time, so much happened. Paul talks about in due time. So, I mean, this is huge. So we bow to the verdicts of the, so this is still the, the star speaking to me. We vow to the, bow to the verdicts of the heavenly court, releasing the seasons of justice, judgment, grace, mercy, and peace upon the earth. There are specific seasons of different things that are released upon the earth that the heavenly courts govern, but the stars are responsible to execute those into the earth realm. They, they continue to say, we cooperate with the jubilee season by redeeming the time. The stars, the sun, moon, and stars have a, a part to play in even the jubilee season. Uh, so we, they said, we cooperate with the jubilee season by redeeming the time according to the edicts of the Father. And it is our great delight to do this. All creation longs to be fully submitted to our holy and righteous King for his kindness and generosity have no end. And then they started singing the most beautiful song I've ever heard. And I, I can't even explain it. It was like nothing I've ever heard before. It was harmonious, but not, not like not like earth music and I begin to see like what a tiny little box earthly music is in it's like like a grain of sand on the seashore of what what worship and music can be and each of these stars sang praise to God in his, its own way forming a heavenly symphony of sound and light and frequency and color that it started to resonate in every fiber of my being and it was just like like almost too much it was so beautiful and their heart the the the, the heart of love and reverence and adoration for God 
aligned me with their song, and yet I knew I was built, being filled with something ancient, but yet it was new to me. It was it was old. My spirit was familiar with it, but it was it was new at the same time. And uh, I knew by the spirit that it was changing me, and that it would be released through me to change the earth realm. And that has happened. That has definitely happened. I entered the realm of timelessness so I could stay there as long as the Father desired. And the longer I stayed, the more I began to resonate and vibrate like sympathetic vibration in a stringed instrument. I want to pause here because, and I'm going to talk about this a little more later, but uh, within the last couple of days, I heard a story of somebody that... Um, is a friend of a friend. I don't know this person personally, but he spends so much time in the heavenly realm that it, you know he's 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 here, but he's not here a lot of times. And I heard this story shared that um, that he was he's a worship leader and he was worshiping and he he lit, he flickered. His body left the stage in the middle of worship for like a, a few seconds, like like three or four seconds, and they caught it on video. Like he disappears on video, and he came back. And um, he had just written a song that morning that, of course, you know, he'd never written it, you know, never recorded it or anything like that. He just wrote it that morning that 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 after that conference that he was leading worship at, he got home and found on his computer a fully mastered, mixed, recorded version of that song that he had just written that morning. So he was out for a couple of seconds in the in body. But in a different dimension, he was outside of time, and he was gone long enough in that realm to come back and have a fully produced version of that song. Guys, time is a tiny little box, and we are not subject to it. It's very similar to the, the movie The Matrix. We've been conditioned to think that we're under time's limitations, but as spirit beings, we are not. And we talked, um, we talked about, um, I think it was in the last... A session about Melchizedek's timeline and how he showed us that the, por the the dots on the timeline are just portals into the eternal realm. We can go in and out of time and in and out of dimensions in Christ. We are in Christ and he is outside of time. So after, that was a little side note, but that was a good story. <laughs> so then um, after, the, I, after I interacted with the stars, the father said to me this. He said, the sons of Issachar knew the times and seasons, but I am raising up my sons to govern the times and seasons. Those who practice lawlessness have grieved the celestial bodies by forcing them out of alignment with my will. But my justice is now being released on their behalf as these lawless ones are judged and displaced and then replaced by my sons who can be trusted to bring them into proper alignment. This is why creation groans and travails for their manifestation. That's huge. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of what the counterfeit does, but what the Father was explaining to me basically is this. Yes, creation has come out of alignment at the fall. Satan usurped mankind's dominion over time, over the stars, and he uses it for his own purposes. So the occult understands more about that than the church because religion... It's all about shame, fear, and control, and religion has kept us in a state of immaturity. Jesus said it. He said the children of this world are in some ways wiser than the children of light. This is what he was talking about. Um, the majority in Israel missed the Messiah, yet who came and worshipped him? Astrologers from the east saw his star. We'll talk more about that in a minute. So... Um, what the Lord was explaining to me here was how the occult has understood how to alter the times and the seasons of mankind by altering, by taking illegal dominion over the stars and throwing them out of alignment so that they can capitalize on the times and the seasons that are not in line with the will of the Father. So not only do they do that to advance their own purposes, and this takes a great great deal of understanding and skill in the dark arts, but also um, I, I, they, they do this because they can throw, they can, they can bring um, seasons, times and seasons out of alignment and then foretell those things because they created it illegally. 
So I don't want to get into a lot of detail about how the occult does this, but we just need to understand that they are very skilled. We're a little bit behind, but we're growing to maturity and we're understanding who we are and what we have been given. And, and when we take our place, they will be displaced. And we don't have to be a big shot. We don't have to be super spiritual. Light displaces darkness when it shows up. Because, it, because of its very nature. It's because of who we are. It's because Christ in us, the hope of glory, is resonating out of us because it can't not resonate out of us if we know who we are. I want to read Romans 8. I love this. And then we're going to wrap up for this time and talk about some other cool stuff later. So Romans 8, 19 through 22, a familiar passage, but think of it in terms of what we've been talking about with the stars in this time. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God, the, the mature sons of God. Remember we talked about Revelation 12, the church that gives birth to the sons who rule and reign. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subject, subjected it in hope. He did it in hope. He was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. He knew we were going to have a happy ending before we ever fell. That's good news. Uh, but because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God, for we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs until now. Birth pangs. The sons of God are being birthed in the earth and creation all of creation is being brought back into right divine order into proper alignment into subjection to the will of the father and it's so excited for that to happen so the stars need us to realign them because we've been restored back to our original design as a born again believer and as we subdue them they will align to you know like we talked about with the with the roman centurion so I've been in several um, classrooms of the Maseroth in the spirit, and um, I've learned some stuff. Uh, I think I'm going to, I have I, know, I have a lot more to learn, and, you know, maybe that this will be an entire teaching in and of itself as the Holy Spirit continues to teach me. But, you know, I've learned a little bit about how the occult takes an illegally gained position of dominion and how they do that. But what I really want to, to emphasize here is that astrology is the cheap counterfeit because it puts us under the power of the stars, right? It They move the stars so they alter the times and seasons, they capitalize upon that, they predict that, but they're putting themselves up under that as well. And that's the big difference. Remember what I said at the beginning, it's, a, it's an issue of dominion. Um, they have usurped authority, but they don't have true God-given dominion because they're practicing lawlessness. So astrology is a cheap counterfeit, putting us under the power of the stars instead of under God's authority and in our place of authority, bringing them into proper alignment so that the times and seasons can be brought back into proper order. I'm going to give you a couple of biblical examples, and we're going to wrap this one up. Um, so do you know there's an example of this in the Bible? This is kind of an obscure passage that you might not have ever connected the dots, but this is so cool. And it's in the story of Deborah. Remember the story of Deborah and Barak and Judges? And uh, Judges 4, it tells how they went to war um, against Sisera, who was the captain of the Canaanite army. And remember, Barak was a little nervous to go, and he said, I'm, I don't want to go, and I'll only go if you go. So Deborah said, yes, I'll go. And so they got a glorious victory. Remember, J.L. put the tent peg in Sisera's head, and, and, and it was a glorious victory for Israel because they were being oppressed by, by the Canaanite people. Well, in Judges 5 is the song of Deborah. So she's, she was a psalmist, a prophetess, a prophetess, a psalmist, and she was singing her song retelling the story of this glorious victory. Well, you might not have ever noticed this verse, but in Judges 5.20, it says this, it says, the stars in their courses fought from the heavens. They fought against Sisera. It's just kind of thrown in there in the middle of, wow, this was an awesome victory. But it literally says that, there's, that the stars in their courses fought against Sisera. So she understood some stuff. Guys, 
this is might be new to us, but these are the ancient paths that many, many, many godly people have walked in throughout the generations. And and it's available to us through the shed blood, the shed blood of the Lamb. So the stars quickly, this is stuff that we all know. The stars' job is to glorify. Uh, to bring glory to the Lord, like like you learned from what they shared with me in that encounter. But I want to I want to stay I want us to stay well grounded in the Word. So I want to read a couple passages. Psalm nineteen one through six: The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth His handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. I heard their song. They have a voice, and it's real. This isn't just poetic language. David understood. I think he heard it too. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he hath set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit his circuit, that's talking about the astrology, that's talking about the twelve houses of the Maseroth. And I'm going to go into more detail with that later. But his circuit, I chose the King James Version because I wanted it to say that word. His It's circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. The star's job is to preach the gospel. For over 2,000 years, the, word, the world did not have a written record, a written um, revelation. So, but he did not leave the world without a witness. And we know this. Romans 1.20 says this, For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. The stars preach the gospel, and they long to do so. And even in their fallen state, they still tell the story of the gospel. And there's some really good books out there about that that tell the story of the gospel through the 12 houses of the Zodiac, but I'm going to call it the Maseroth. The, I'm going to use the biblical term. Matthew 2, 2. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, three wise men from the east, I believe they were Chaldeans, came to Jerusalem saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? We have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. The word Zodiac is from a Greek word that I cannot pronounce, so sorry, <laughs> you can look it up. And that Greek word comes from the Hebrew root word sodi, S-O-D-I, which in Sanskrit literally means a way, referring to the way or the path in which the sun appears to move through the stars uh, through the year, the circuit, as that was in, that, in Psalm 19. So Proverbs 8, 27 is the story I love. I love Proverbs 8 because it tells wisdom was there co-creating with the creator in the beginning. It's one of my favorite chapters ever. So wisdom says this, talking about when she was co-creating with God in the beginning. She says, when she was with him, when he prepared the heavens, I was there when he set a compass upon the face of the deep. And it means literally, the amplified version says a compass or a circle. That word in that passage, the Hebrew word compass is Strong's 2329, and it literally means circle, compass, uh, circuit, circle, compass, vault of the heavens. How cool is that? So he's placed the story of the gospel, and that is not just, when we say the gospel, that is not just talking about the birth of Jesus. His gospel continues. The Bible says that Jesus was the stone, the stone cut without hands that has become the mountain that is filling the whole earth. Guys, we're, do, we're, we're doing the greater works. You know, the, the Bible says that the, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. So his kingdom is ever, expand, ever expanding. So the gospel, there's some books written about the gospel in the stars that tell the salvation story about Jesus and the fall and all that stuff, and that is very true. But the gospel of the, ki the kingdom is continuing. So the gospel, the stars continue to tell the story of the kingdom that is continuing to advance, advance through us, his children. It is continuing to unfold. There is so much to the story uh, that I, 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 I plan to do another teaching to get into it a little more in depth. So just, we're, we got to wrap this up. I'm trying to make these teachings um, not too long so they can be bite-sized and <laughs> not too overwhelming. But the circle of the deep which is journeying through the 12 houses 
um, the Maseroth in constellation order is an ancient path. We are to align them and to legislate them, not to be subject to them. So just to summarize this, the stars are given by God to govern times and seasons. They have an important job in the manifestation of his promises in our life, in walking out his will, in governing his ju righteous judgments from the courts of heaven. So we, from a place of total submission to him, stand in our place of authority. We bring them back into right, right order. We bring them into divine order. And it, is, it brings joy to them because they long to fulfill the will of the Father. So he is, uh, his kingdom is ever increasing and creation is being brought back into right order because as we've been born again, we have been brought back into right order and we have now authority and dominion to bring creation back into divine order for his glory, for the glory of his name, to glorify him, to advance his kingdom, to continue to preach the gospel to all of creation. So I hope you've enjoyed this, and I hope that the Father opens up. Um, let me just pray that he will, this is impartation, where he can open up new realms and dimensions to you. Father, we thank you for your revelation. We step into it with gratitude, and we say yes. We want you to show us the ancient past so we can walk in them and glorify your name. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, see you next time.